Now, with every new CPU, GPU, or console generation, the customer base of each bay for blood. The launch of the PS5 Pro is extra special, as it delivers all three in one, but the biggest question mark over the console's long-term boosts may stem from the first. History repeats itself on the PS4 Pro, which shared that same 8-core Jaguar CPU of the base PS4, albeit 33% faster clocks. Here, the same Zen 2 8-core 16-thread 3.5GHz CPU is more modestly boosted to a potential 10% higher rate of 3.85GHz. So the question is, what power level does that give the new console? Power levels 8,000 power. Wait, it's over 9. Now, following my early look at another CPU-bound title, on PC at least, in Dragon's Dogma 2, in my full PS5 Pro review and earlier preview, links are on screen and below, we saw impressive results in that game, pointing to an area I often discuss, memory or data bound. As the PS5 Pro is a whopping 50% faster at times than the base PS5, and even 20 plus percent faster than my 5600X 6-core 12-thread CPU, paired with an RX 6800, and 32 gigabytes of 3600 DDR4 RAM. Now another collection of CPU limited titles are available and the PS5 Pro patch for Baldur's Gate 3 that dropped on launch day of the console on the 7th made it an early bird test. Apologies, I'm a little late for this for various reasons. Now the patch that dropped from the team was PS5 Pro visual focused and just doing the same runs on the Pro pre and post patch demonstrates performances almost identical here, but visuals are not. The game offers dual modes, both on PS5 and PS5 Pro, with a native 1440p at 30fps quality mode and a 60fps upscaled from 1920x1080p to 1440 That mode is entitled Performance on the base console, which uses FSR2. In fact, both modes do. We now see a new 4K target in both modes. Quality is native 4K now on the Pro, a huge 2.2% pixel hike over the PS5, and the performance mode now uses PSSR to again target 4K. A welcome visual improvement that we can use in like-for-like -like DLSS versus FSR2 comparisons a little later in the video, so stick around for that. The nine hells! Open the gates! Now, inside Baldur's Gate itself, we are CPU and memory bound most often as it becomes the bottleneck, on PC and console alike. Now, as per my reviews, the PC uses DX11 and Vulkan. Thus, in Act 3's Baldur's Gate locale, Vulkan should be the better choice, as CPU utilization is often better across more cores over a largely dual thread limited DX11. Using a selection of my PCs, we can see this is not all always true with my 5600X 6 core 12 thread CPU and that same 32 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz DDR4 runs around 8% better on average on DirectX 11 over Vulkan. The team have clearly worked well here to get incredible thread utilization out of the aging API, hitting 85 plus percent total use at times, with Vulkan being close, but it can have more stutter from data misses, 90 milliseconds versus 66 worst to worst frame time spikes from this cache or code issues that the game clearly has. My RTX 2070 paired with this 2700 Zen Plus CPU does struggle more than this PC. It's very close, but it's slightly better on Vulkan than DX11, showing it can use threads very effectively, helping the slower clocks and IPC. Those extra two core four threads are not enough though, leaving it 42.6% faster on the newer Zen 3 CPU, not helped by the slower 3200MHz of RAM and older architecture. Now the PS5 and PS5 Pro here do well, but not to the same level as we saw in Dragon's Dogma 2. Not something that is a surprise, as I often say, teams must be multidisciplined, and if console or PC is your forte, then the platform can gain or lose based on those skill sets or experience. And in this section, we are CPU and data bound, and the 5600X is an excellent mid-range and high-value CPU. Now compared to the base PS5, we see no 66 millisecond spikes and no intrusive tearing which can be resolved on PC with double or triple buffering, not an option on consoles. This points to the fact that they are more memory bound on consoles, leaving the game running more hand to mouth on render time. 
causing constant tearing on PS5 and PS5 Pro, which was something I hoped the team could resolve by now. Now, this would be a focus for myself if the PS5 Pro has that extra 1GB plus available of RAM to the games. The PS5 pitted against the 5600X machine, we see a large gap open, even with less cores. Highs and lows can be the same 33% faster on the PC. Averages over this fixed run though, using a variety of sections to stress data streaming, rendering, memory use and interactions of NPC, we are nearly 20% faster than the base PS5 CPU which is helped by that 31% clock boost of the 5600X at 4.6 GHz, countered by the 33% extra cores on the PS5, again highlighting paper specs are not linear, and real world is never the same as theory. The PS5 Pro does see an increase over that same comparison though, and it can be, again, 33% faster than the base console over the same run through town. Ending up though 10.5% faster on average, but not enough to close the gap to the 5600X, 6 core 12 thread CPU, training it by 8.4% on average, again with peaks and troughs either side. Now like PS5 to Pro though, this is so close to be practically identical to the player, but the PC takes the lead here. Now, in terms of like-for-like -like performance, the PS5 CPU, both base and pro, competes well with a 5600X and even 5700X range here, backing up what I said on many prior PS5 reviews and PS5 Pro predictions. The console CPU memory subsystem, dedicated I.O. coprocessor, API, SDK, all enable that 3.5GHz Zen 2 base component to compete and even at times exceed a Zen 3 6 core 12 thread 4.6 GHz CPU and memory system in some titles. This is still very good and close, but it's lower than Dragon's Dogma 2 and other first party titles such as Horizon Zero Dawn, Spider Man, Ragnarok, amongst others. However, the fact is, this game is a PC-focused title, and just as with first-party or console-focused games, they play to the strength of that hardware, and that can hinder PC, but here, that PC focus from the team favours that platform and hinders both PS5 machines, and even Series X and Series S. Loading is a good way for me to demonstrate this. The game likely does not use the IOD compression blocks well, or maybe even at all. Instead, using all CPU load and decompression, or maybe other overheads here on the PS5. The 5600X with a fast SSD but longer load chain is a whopping 58.8% faster than the PS5 Pro, which itself highlights the CPU work here being only 6.4% faster than the base PS5, leaving the PS5 6% slower than the PS5 Pro and 69% slower than the 5600X. That's how deltas work. And if it were using the IO subsystem and those decompression blocks, it would not be taking that long. And this explains the reason why we're seeing such a delta in that CPU performance, as it's leaning heavier on the CPU rather than utilizing the specific architecture and design of the PS5 and PS5 Pro, which is designed to alleviate that pressure and allow the CPU to do more dedicated work, i.e., or the traversal NPC states and other aspects the game requires. Fundamentally though, this is a game that clearly favours PC, and here the boost on PS5 Pro, in performance at least, are barely visible. But in terms of GPU load, even in that 60fps mode at 1440p, it's pretty much a locked 60fps aside when you load into cutscenes, which is the best test for GPU load specifically, you can see the game tears at the beginning of this cutscene and then smooths out to a flat 60fps. The exact same situation happens on the PS5 Pro with it tearing at the start and then smoothing out to 60fps. Please! There's no time! Open the gates! <coughs> Moving to image quality comparisons, we see a mixed blessing of improvements, reinforcing why pixel counts are not all they're cracked up to be. Now the bump from 1440p to 4K sounds great on paper, but in practice, the benefit is smaller than many would expect, and let me explain why. Let's start with FSR 2 versus PSSR first, and we can see that image stability and sub-pixel sampling is far superior with PSSR. 
Notice the high contrast of the leaves against the sky fizzle and flicker with FSR2, while PSSR maintains a stable and flicker-free presentation. The thin rail tracks and moir pattern that they create can be a challenge for TAA and upscalers as a collective, and FSR2 struggles here, often a weakness, due to an over-sharpened image, dithered sampling and a lack of convergence of pixel weighting. This causes the track to jitter and almost ripple constantly, which gets slightly worse when occluded and then disoccluded, but PSSR handles this brilliantly with almost no flicker and moir patterns present. Only when the occlusion test crops up do we see it occur, but it is quickly resolved due to a better convergence on that pixel data samples over time, settling the area back to stability. Shadows also struggle under FSR2 with pixel trails and breakup, which we have seen happen often with the AMD solution, not so under PSSR. Finally, alpha and sparse shading are worse with FSR2, such as hair cards, which, along with the high sharpening, can cause more ringing and fizzle on camera cuts or motion. See the worst case here against PSSR after a camera cut. Every object is AA-free, raw, untouched, and naked pixels just like the day they were born leaving a rough and sharp image that softens and smooths over multiple frames. PSSR solves all this with a much cleaner, less aliased and more pleasing resolve, but it highlights the main weakness of PSSR in this iteration and implementation at least. Lack of fine details. Notice the tree bark, the shades on the leaves and clothes all lack the high frequency information. Again, their hair is more solid, blended, but softer with less detail present. We see this in all surfaces and even rocks, grass, shadows all remain more consistent of a higher resolution base, but smudge all those fine elements together, which can leave a softer blurred image, albeit more consistent image that is less prone to noise and flicker. But textures also play a part, but it's not just those alone. As you can see, the PS5 actually looks sharper and more detailed in this comparison, even with a lower base resolution. Now DLSS, which is version 2.42 here by default with the game, is surprisingly close, with the gap being much closer than FSR2, in some areas at least, but not all. Both handle camera cuts, hair, shadows, and the train track pattern test very well. DLSS is better on the balance of jittering noise versus clarity though, with hair being the perfect target of the sharpness of FSR2 with the stability of PSSR. Again though, texture details, alpha shadows are all as stable, but retain more of that high frequency info, which is far lower on PS5 and certainly PS5 Pro here due to those memory constraints again as textures are generally a lower quality on both, as is sampling, but also the solution that Sony uses here. It does keep both fizzle and noise to a minimum, with PSSR being slightly better, such as the train track test causing more jittering noise when disoccluded and pixel fizzle around characters as they pass over it. PSSR manages to minimize that breakup and pixel fade and flicker of DLSSS. However, the far softer image and reduced clarity means it comes at a cost that could be worth a trade, as PSSR is really running around the balance mode that is closer than quality as you've seen so far, but even comparing that native 4K quality mode to DLSS2 quality confirms that the assets and the PSSR solution are a large reason for the much lower quality with it managing to improve on the Sony solution and the full 4K image within that temporal consistency versus image clarity equilibrium. However, for a launch day first time PSSR solution, likely from a small team and time, this is a strong showing and certainly exceeds FSR2 as the baseline TAA and reconstruction solution for the Pro, and I'm confident it will improve drastically in the coming months ahead. As one of a growing collection of fast sales focused boosts for PS5 Pro players, this update does not offer a great deal over the PS5 version. Performance is better, but by margins rather than any big leap. Image updates are more mixed. Drastically improved pixel counts and far more stable image from PSSR is hindered somewhat by a lower image clarity in detail than both PS5 and PC. And I would hope the team can add a third option to run the old performance mode using FSR2 quality at 4K, which may be the best balance between the two current modes. 
Hopefully this was an educational and enjoyable video and hopefully gave you an insight into some of the challenges developers will have and why games won't always be top of the tree or bottom of the tree. Remember, Sony did say that this is up to 45% and this is a good example of where it will peak and trough. And this is something we've seen consistently throughout every single generation of PC and console hardware. And that's it for another fast and deep dive into PC, PS5 and PS5 Pro. Remember, I am self-funded and completely independent. And you can help by liking, sharing, subscribing and commenting down below. All of those things help me and the pesky algorithm to improve my reach and also if you'd like to get exclusive access and early access to content like this and others and also drive some of the content i create and ask me questions over on my database videos then you can join me over on my patreon for a few dollars or pounds per month it really helps and again because i'm self-funded and independent it consistently keeps me independent and hopefully informative anyway that's it for now i'm out but i'll catch you very soon on the next one all treating you gail oh Quite well, as a matter of fact.